So he said, tell me what, you, what we do. So boom, next. You get green on the command and control console and then the botnet master says, go, replicate, click. What happens next? So then I said, well, the malware, what's gonna try to do is gonna try to discover every other computer on that segment, trying to see who's at there, what their name is, what their ports are, what their services are, what operating system they have. Everything we've talked about a million times about fingerprinting. Um, so they're gonna do a couple of things. They're gonna use different protocols, DHCP, ARP. They're going to use network discovery mechanisms to try and pinpoint every other computer that's out there verify what their operating system is, verify what ports and services they have and their version as well, and then go out there and find vulnerabilities for those services and then bring it back to that and then exploit it and then infect those other devices. That is exactly step-by-step step how these things happen, how the, the malware propagates. A very, very high percentage of that 90s, I'd say, I dare to say, 90s is through Microsoft protocols and services. And we've talked about this, that you're in the Starbucks and then the computer's gonna try to vomit everywhere. Here I am, Who's el who else is in here? I'm here, this is my name, these are my services. So try to communicate because it thinks, Windows, a Windows machine always thinks that it's in an Active Directory protected environment. So it's gonna try to talk to everyone. And that's how you collect that information. But even on the broad, even if that's for the broadcast, even on the inbound, if there's a Windows machine at Starbucks, there's a very high chance that you're gonna be able to ping it to try to communicate through it, through those protocols into file sharing or internet sharing or just synchronizing between the two. Here's me, here's you, let's talk. Or maybe we don't have any, anything to talk about, but let's be ready to talk if we have to. And that's what Microsoft computers do every day, every hour, every minute through those Windows protocols. So, and I told them, Blaster, Sasser, not Petia, um, Eternal Blue, all those were major, major breaches. And they all exploited those protocols, those Windows services. So just by being there, you would send a malform packet, packet to those services and boom, you would get access to it. There are many, 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 many videos on YouTube that you can check it out to see how easy and quick it is. So we're actively, so then he said, okay, how, do, how does BIOS stop that? And we said, we simply do not allow any of that to happen. All the tools that you need as an attacker to get the intel you need to be able to launch the attack, we do not allow any of those to happen. So we do not allow you to launch any ARP requests and we do not let your computer to be listening to ARP requests coming from the network. We don't let you get access to the DHCP lists. So you don't get to see which other computer is on the network. We don't let you launch a networking discovery. We do that for you, but we don't give you that information. We send it to the cloud so the admins can set up access control groups, but we don't give you that information, you as a user, you don't get that. And when you try to launch it, we stop it at the edge and we give you nothing in return, like zero, ghosting. And that's what we do. Effectively, essentially, step-by-step, step, we stop you from trying to get out there. We stop you from listening what anybody else is trying to tell you. And we don't let you manually try to get out there and see what's going on. So any, any broad-based attack that needs you to set up camp and then pivot and find out, you know, check out the map, what it looks like, it's gonna be blank. It's gonna be a black screen coming from BIOS. You're not gonna get that intel. 